was late Christmas Eve. Well, not super late. I was in downtown waiting for my girlfriend and her family. Downtown San Diego is not that great of a big city downtown. It's been the dirty slash shady part of town, and it's been, as of in recent years, a cultural social epicenter of mediocrity. It's a part of San Diego that I best describe as somewhere between trying and giving up. My girlfriend, her family, and I were going to see a movie and have some late-night Christmas Eve snacks afterward. If memory serves correct, we were going to see the highly anticipated Lemony Snickets and a series of unfortunate events. Anyway, I arrived early because I knew parking would be bad. Since I had a few minutes to kill, I decided to half-read a newspaper and half-people watch, or as I like to call it, judge. <laughs> Any big city downtown is a veritable people-watching paradise. You get to see drunken frat guys and guys who think they're still in college chasing drunk girls in short skirts who are crying and yelling obscenities at their best girlfriends. <laughs> you also get to see a healthy mix of normal homeless people and crazy homeless people. There are people playing instruments for money, older rich guys picking up where the wannabe frat guys slash actual frat guys have failed, and groups of secretaries out for a night on the town to celebrate Carol's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Carol. You're 38 now, and this is going to be your year. <laughs> on Christmas Eve, however, you get two added people watching elements. The first is families out for a nice dinner, or like me, a movie. The other element that is almost doubled on Christmas Eve is homeless people looking for the Yuletide handout. Normally, I'm about 50-50 on giving homeless people money. I'm conflicted on how to feel about them. Should I care or should I walk on by? The majority of us think of it as a scam or just don't care, and who's to say that's wrong? It's human nature to give or to take. The Bible warns us that the homeless and downtrodden represent Jesus, and turning your back on them is almost certain hellfire. You may laugh at that, but don't think that's not in the back of my ex-Catholic mind every time I pass one thinking to myself, get a job. Since I can't really decide on how to feel, I've instituted a deal with the homeless and myself. If I have a dollar, it's mine. Or it's theirs, I'm sorry. If I have anything over a dollar, it's mine. However, this rule has one exception. The crazy homeless. They scare me. I have no desire to give them any money, as I fear they might try to A, eat it, or B, spend it on parts for their spaceship. <laughs> Leaning on the dirty wall of the theater, I stood parallel to a homeless guy. He was a scruffy, tall, lanky black man, easily in his 50s. He was in a great place at the entry to the theater right after people had just bought their tickets. It was an optimum position to get people's change. However, pickings were slim. Most people walked by without even noticing him or smiling at him. Honestly, he wasn't much to look at. He was covered in a ragged walnut suit jacket, complete with torn gloves and a wrecked scarf that at some point was meant to look a shade of blue. If you didn't know any better, you'd think he was seconds away from singing, We'd like to thank you, Herbert Hoover. In honor of this, I gave the homeless man a name, Hoover. I walked over and gave Hoover a few coins that I had. He said the expected, God bless you, Merry Christmas, then looked at me for a second, gave me a soft smile, and turned back to facing the line. I walked back to my position and tried my best to ignore his wiry, depressed frame in the corner of my eye. I kept peeking over my newspaper to see if anyone was giving him money, but nothing came. About five minutes passed, and I was lost in this couple across the street, fighting over whether the girl had had too much to drink or not. Right around the time she fell to the ground, and I had made my decision on her blood alcohol level, I heard a voice to my right say, Oh, you poor thing. Looking over, there was this family talking to Hoover. They were clearly well off and completely the kind of people you'd expect to just walk past them, but unlike the dozens before them, they didn't. The mother of the family asked how he was, but Hoover gave no response, just a sad look. She then took off her brand new bright auburn scarf and gave it to him, then took out her purse to give him some money, which she did, and from what I could see, it was just a few dollars. She looked at her husband, who already had his wallet out, which she grabbed all the bills inside and handed them over to Hoover. He was stunned. I was stunned. Everyone in the movie line had turned his or her attention to what was happening, and they were stunned. The wad of cash could have been anywhere from hundreds of dollars or a bunch of $1 bills, but that wasn't on anybody's mind. Hoover stood there motionless. It was like somebody had frozen him solid and he was trying to eke out the words, Oil can! I was able to pry my eyes off the scene and gaze over to the onlookers, all with expressions I can only imagine mirrored mine. As I stared at them, my mind took over. <laughs> that guy would never give him money, I thought. That one would just walk on by. <laughs> These people are terrible. I like this amazing family. Then I realized they are probably thinking the same thing about me. 
After what seemed like five minutes, but in actuality was about five seconds, I could hear Hoover muster the words, God bless you, ma'am. Then he stuttered and tried to continue with a thank you. But the woman cut him off, pulled him close, kissed him on the cheek, and said, Merry Christmas, sir. I've never seen a street corner so populated go so quiet. Even the drunk couple across the street had gone silent. My mouth was wide open, newspaper still stuck in the air, my eyes fixed on Hoover. With that, her and her unfaced family walked into the theater, all wishing him a Merry Christmas as they passed, like it was something they do every night. And perhaps it was. Did we all just get to witness something we've only read about in stories? Seen in movies or rumored through generations like a family secret or a myth? Were everyday people really capable of greatness? Hoover finally raised his head, put the money in his pocket, then slowly creeping across his face was the same soft smile I'd seen minutes earlier. Only this time, I began to see singular tears streak down his face as I began to feel my own tears fall off my chin. Within seconds, as if the spell had been broken, the corner was back to the hustle it's accustomed to. The man across the street picked up his girlfriend, People went back to buying tickets, and I wiped my face with the same quickness the city had wiped away the moment. Suddenly, the door behind me flung open, and it was my girlfriend who informed me that her and her family had been waiting for me in the theater the whole time. She asked me why I was crying, so I tried to explain what had just happened. By the time I got to the end, we were sitting down, and she just said, How nice. I started to push further, imploring how amazing this all was and that I didn't think how nice was the appropriate response. Bells should have been rung, awards given, people joining hands and singing how nice. I sat there confused on how I failed to communicate the importance of this situation and what I was feeling. But what was I feeling? Everyone on the corner witnessed a fabled act of generosity so significant that drunks were silenced. A city street brought to a halt. This meant something, but what? As I left the theater, I, of course, looked outside to see if Hoover was still there, but he had already moved on to a new stop in another tax bracket. I wanted to see if the lady or her family came out, but no luck there either. They might have been gathered at some other theater working on a cure for cancer or something else noble. <laughs> Did I see this moment to feel that I'm incapable of such a charitable life? I give money. I do my part. I solemnly walked along the streets downtown, thinking... Could this woman and her family really be like this? Well, I thought, <laughs> not all the time. And then a small grin began to form on my face. It slowly turned into a smile so big it would rival George Bailey's. Greatness does exist, just not all the time. Thank you. Dallas McLaughlin.